right, guys, welcome to class. We have a brand new mini lesson today. We're calling it DL mini lessons. I know you guys are so used to just writing mini lesson. I think we're at like 72 right now, but we're calling it digital learning mini lessons. So this is going to be number one for us. Okay. So we're going to kind of chart new territories today. Our standard today is 6.8 A E analyze characteristics and structures of argumentative text. Now, a couple things before we dive into what we're going to read today and how we're going to analyze it, which is just to remind us, how do we talk about argument? Okay. Now we've defined it a couple ways in our journals, but I want to really hone in on how we're going to focus on this during this unit right now. So the way we're going to define this is argumentative text is anything that is making a claim. Remember argument is not just debate. Anytime you're standing up to make a claim about something, you're making an argument. It doesn't mean you're necessarily inviting someone else to argue with you or debate with you, but just the idea of putting something out there, making a claim about something is an argument. And we're going to look at that in something that's um, a really interesting piece today, but let's go ahead and define that. So what we're really looking at is we are definitely, we're examining an argumentative text, but we're kind of, you know, we're analyzing, you know, the characteristics and we're really, um, when we turn around and look at it as a writer, we're definitely going to hit on this structure piece because those Knowing how that stuff breaks down is really going to change how we interpret some of these things for our own uses and as readers, really. So write this with me, argument. And I know I said any text, but let's go ahead, let's branch that out. So it's argument is any text or medium that makes a claim. So what that essentially means is that if we can find something that's making a claim, that means we're dealing with some type of argument. Now, this broadens this genre up, and I think it's good for us to think like that because when you guys are moving up through the grades or when you're uh, just interacting with stuff in the real world, you need to know that people are almost always making an argument, whether they're selling you something or they're doing something like that. So I think training us to think like this really does help anytime we're reading something because stuff is written for a reason, you know, and sometimes it's a creative reason, but a lot of the times, uh, the things that we see in the news, the things that we see in the media are designed to make us think a certain way. So the more we get to go and, okay, so what is the argument being made here? What's the claim? I think we really do start, um, elevating the way we read something and the way we just consume media. So the text that we're going to be working with today is actually something that has been pretty popular. I, I'm not hundred percent sure how to pronounce this last name, but it's Kitty O'Meara, I do believe, but this is something that was actually passed around on the internet kind of went viral and I brought up this interesting article uh, because this is something that just went viral recently because this was something that this author wrote in order to kind of process through what's happening with the coronavirus to process just her own uh, feelings about everything. So this is a, a very new piece. Um, and it, I just thought it was really, I think this was just a great starting point for us to really dive into argument and dive into just our lessons for, um, this time. So this is a really interesting article that I found on Oprah magazine, but it talks about how, um, this was inspired by the coronavirus pandemic. You know, in this article, you know, down here, she talks about how, you know, one of the reasons she wrote it, she, she was anxious. So I, you know, this is just a really brilliant piece for us to look at because we're kind of taking it as an argument, but you know, for all intents and purposes, this piece was written for as a, as a reflection, which I think is really, I think this is really going to help us, um, dive into it in a couple different ways, especially as we start analyzing it as Riders, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna read this out loud. Um, and I want you to kind of follow along um, either on the screen or in the materials that you have uh, in the class. And I just want you to always read it for enjoyment first, and then we'll analyze it. it says, and the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games and learned new ways of being and were still and listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced, some met with their shadows, and the people began to think differently. And the people healed, and in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And when the danger passed, and the people joined together again, they grieved their losses and made new choices 
and dreamed new images and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully as they had been healed. You know, and there's so much to unpack in this. And we're not going to do it all in this video. Um, and I want you to kind of explore it on your own. But, you know, just a couple things that stands out to me as a reader is just the, the tone, right? You know, the tone and the mood of this. So the first thing I want you to process in your own is the mood. Um, just looking at it, I mean, there's, there's so many uh, lines that really stand out. But, you know, when we're thinking about mood, remember, mood is kind of like uh, the feeling we get from something. So when we're looking at this, you know, the, the mood at, at first, you know, I kind of get it like it's kind of sad to me in a lot of ways. So uh, what I want you to do is I want you to not only write down what mood stands out to you from this, but why. Um, and I'll kind of explain why this, you know, it's just, you know, people staying home, you know, and, and it's reading books and listening and resting and exercising and making art and all of that. Um, but here, you know, there's a, there's a changing point right here when it's like, when it kind of moves into this area, which is, you know, the, this line of some met their shadows. Like, what does that mean? Like when we're really thinking about, you know, meeting our, uh, our shadows right there that that just line stands out to me because it shadows you know just symbolically um in literature or songs or anything like that it's used kind of in a way to talk about the parts that other people don't see or you know the parts that are kind of hidden a little bit because you know a shadow doesn't give you all the detail it just gives you kind of the outline but what does that mean to come into contact with your own shadow why don't we know our shadows in the first place uh and then around uh stanza two paragraph two however you want to break this down you see and the people healed and in the absence of people living in ignorant dangerous mindless heartless ways the earth began to heal so you see there is this almost separation right um People healing causes what to heal, right? The earth to heal. All of these kind of negative lines talking about just what people do. So, right, we get a sense of the argument being made here, right? I mean, she's pulling in this idea that people are causing pain not only to each other and ourselves, but to earth itself. And then right here, it starts to, it starts to shift a little bit, right? And when the danger passed and the people joined together again, they grieved their losses. You know, I think that's right there. That's one of the words that, or lines that really stands out. You know, if we're grieving our losses, this idea of, you know, that we did lose something, right? Do you know, during all of this, but we made new choices and we dreamed new images and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully as they had been healed. So for me as a reader, I feel like the beginning right here is really, hang on, let me move this. It's kind of in my way. So I move that over there. But when we're looking at this first section, you know, this whole first part to me is kind of like the, the buildup to the argument, right? So this is kind of building, you know, I feel like as the reader, you know, I'm being guided, I'm being shown kind of what's, what's happening. And we know something happened before, right? Cause it says, and the people stayed home, right? And we know this because we know this was inspired by, um, the coronavirus and everything that's happening with the pandemic. So that's kind of the before. So even without having that knowledge though, we are you know, we can infer that something is happening before. That's an interesting technique. We're going to talk about more in just a second, but this whole idea is kind of building. And then here is, I think really this main argument, right? If we go back to our standard, we're analyzing the characteristics and the structure of argumentative text. So this structure, kind of your intro paragraph building to the actual argument. And then I, th I really do, you know, this, I feel like this is the argument. This is the the basic of everything, right? Because it's the people healed and we stopped living in, and let's, I want to look at each of these, right? We're going to put them in red. Um, well, as red as this goes, at least in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, mindless, heartless ways, right? Those that's that boom, boom, boom. So she's hitting us with all of the, the ways that 
she's kind of perceiving or, or putting forth that human beings are living. And I think that's really where that main argument happens. You know, we're, we're ignorant and we're dangerous and we're mindless and we're heartless. And because of those things, earth has been struggling, but now we're going to begin to heal a little bit. And then right here in the danger past, you know, this is kind of like pulling it all together. This is saying, you know, if we had to say something, of an argument, right? If we had to make some type of claim ourselves about this, I think it would read something along the lines of tragedy happened. We went in, we stayed home and we started to heal. We started to grow beyond the fact that we were being ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless. And then the earth began to heal. And then once we began to heal and the earth began to heal, then there's a future. I think this idea of there being a future is really a part of this because it's, it's people are causing these problems. People have destroyed themselves. People have destroyed the earth. Therefore people have destroyed the earth and therefore we are now having to fix ourselves to fix the earth, but there is a future. So even though my mood is kind of sad, you know, I think just talking through this and analyzing this, you know, I think it kind of goes from sad, um, but it evolves through this right to hopeful. And I think that is a really interesting point for this, which is that's our structure, right? It kind of starts with the aftermath. It builds, it tells us kind of where we're at, but then ultimately it goes to hope. And I think, um, you know, just knowing the backstory of this, um, I could infer that almost, you could almost think that that was kind of what the author was thinking as she was going through this, that she was processing that this is what we did. This is why we did it. And this is the possible future. Um, and just as a reader, I'm, encouraged to go, wow. I mean, this is, this is just a, a powerful piece to analyze, to show that when we think as we write, our ideas evolve and this might not have been all she said. And we don't know what kind of revision that happened here, but, um, just as a reader, that's kind of the argument and the, the mood that I get from this. And that that's the structure I see, but I want to challenge you is that in your response to this, I want you to respond to say, you know, what do you think the argument was here? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Do you think there's elements that, um, I didn't catch during this reading? And I want you to respond, um, go through and th comment and send me your actual response to this. You know, it could be just a general reader response. What do you think about her message? The, the overall tone or anything like that, go ahead, send that. And that'll be part of your reading response. Now for analyzing it as a writer, there's so much that we can do here. And we might pull this up again this week. Cause there's, it's such a fantastic piece. You know, there's a reason this went viral, right? It's there, there's so much to do here, but there's one thing I want to point out and I want to point it out because, um, this is one of those major things that people don't talk about in school. You know, teachers everywhere talk about, you know, you can't start a sentence with, and you can't do any of that, but look at this everywhere, right? You see it. Let's pick a different color. I'm going to use bright pink. We have and, and, it's everywhere. There's so many ands, and read books, and listened, and rested, and exercised, and made art, and played, and all of this, and she keeps going, and there's so many of these, and it's just this constant, like, cadence, and, 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 and what I want you to do in your writing this week is look at the structure of this. Look at how she starts sentences. Look at how she talks about the past without telling us what's going on. I think that is such an important craft move, right? Because we're instantly brought in by that first line and the people stayed home. So my challenge to you as a writer is to think of something. It could be what we're experiencing now. It could be something you're experiencing in your own life. It could be anything that you're experiencing. But as a writer, where could you start your piece? How could you start it with, and the people stayed home, right? You could even borrow that line. You could borrow any of these lines to start with, but how could you take something like that? And the people slept and the people hid in fear, right? And the people smiled, right? You could take it into a more positive look, but just that challenge of doing that and then letting the cadence of and or some other word um, guide your piece. Uh, I want y'all to experiment with that this week in your writing and see where you go. You know, you might end up with something like this. 
you might end up with the poem, you might end up with the story, you might end up with just a short little paragraph. But I think just following that and thinking about the structure and thinking about how the words we choose, we can literally change the mood of something as we develop through it and find out where you go and have fun with it and explore. It's language. Make it yours.